To thee we come, O Lord our God. And now, let us recite together the first act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, have pity on us. For you we wait. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of trial. The Lord is all for us in the world. He fills our hands with justice. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks 
We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O Lord our God, increase our faith so that none of us shall live in contentment, knowing when our neighbor is in need. Fill us with a sense of duty that we may hear your voice and follow your holy will. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. for the gospel with the strength that comes from God 
Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the, in the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God will cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah. With a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Luke. disciples said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry bush, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron, and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So shall it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Words taken from today's responsorial psalm, Psalm 146, verse 7. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Mark records a miracle of Jesus healing a man who was deaf and could hardly speak. In the story, the man begs Jesus to place his hand on him. We read that Jesus took him aside, away from the crowd, and he puts his fingers into the man's ears and spitting he touches the man's tongue, 
And looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, Jesus says to him, Afetta, which means be opened. And at this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he begins to speak plainly. During the sacrament of baptism, the priest makes a sign of the cross over each ear of the one being baptized and says each time, Afetta, be opened and hearken unto the voice of the Lord. An infant being baptized does not understand the power of this phrase, as the deaf man in St. Mark's Gospel did not hear it. Our sacramental life with God begins with our baptism, and we begin the process by which we become attuned to the voice of God. Jesus speaks in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 2 through 5, about the importance of hearing a voice. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Throughout Holy Scripture, the voice of God was heard by the righteous, from Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Moses, to the prophets of God. They all heard his voice and followed his directions. The disciples of Jesus heard his voice when he called upon them to follow, and in turn they left everything. You know, any ham radio operator would say that you need to have a receiver to hear and a transmitter to speak. A voice is totally dependent upon a receptive ear. Think for a moment about Helen Keller, who not only was blind, but also deaf and mute. The miracle of Annie Sullivan teaching a young Helen the connection of water through sign gave Helen a way to communicate through a different form of hearing and in a different voice. In today's reading, Habakkuk the prophet heard the voice of God who gave him and the people of his time hope, just as the other prophets heard the voice of God. You know, the Lord speaks to all of us in gentle ways. Not everyone is rocked as St. Paul was, who heard a voice on the road to Damascus and was converted unto the Lord. But we all have received the blessing at our baptism of the words of Feta, Be thou opened, and hearken unto the voice of the Lord, as that deaf man received from Jesus that day. You know, when preparing for our First Holy Communion, we learn we learned through our catechetical instruction of the word conscience. And it is defined in our catechism as the voice of God who tells us what is right and what is wrong. It is said that a person who commits a horrible crime has no conscience. They have lost the ability to judge right from wrong because they do not hear his voice. So what can cause a person to lose the voice of God? I believe that those who exclusively live outside themselves in a physical world become deaf 
to that inner voice of the Lord. And for many, secular humanism professes that the external and physical world is the truth and is reality, and the inward word of spirituality does not exist. Do you remember as children, as kids, having a crystal set? <laughs> yeah, I remember. It was a makeshift primitive radio that one would build. And every crystal set had earphones so that you could block out the outside world and listen faintly to the transmission. So it is with the hearing of the inner voice of God. If we honestly turn our attention to our inner self in prayer and reflection and block out all the distracting noises of the world, we begin to hear the gentle transmission of the inner voice who speaks to us. My dear brothers and sisters, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The inner voice of God within us is a gentle voice, a calming voice, a loving voice, and a forgiving voice. I say a loving voice because true love that comes from God comes from the heart and will soften the hardness of any individual. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may you hear his voice speak to you this day. The one who speaks to you in silence, in the very depth of your being. And may you be guided by that voice who directs you on the way of your path. In closing, let us truly reflect on the words that are found in one of our hymns today. Come unto Jesus. Come unto Jesus. Come while you may. Hear how he calls you. Come now this day. How he does love you. Follow his way. Gently he calls you. Come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> I believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being of the Father. Keep your servant, 
Never let them be control of me. resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father Amen. Let us pray, God, our Heavenly Father, receive the gifts which we offer you today and guide us through your voice that we might ever be faithful in serving you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory this day, repeating humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ 
your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering this day and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again, he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension. We, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch, Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching, have been following the divine example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, 
You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body and the blood of Christ.
The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, may our faith grow through the true grace of this Eucharist, and may it lead us to be willing servants for our neighbors, that we may attain, through hearing your voice, the kingdom of God. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that, that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. I bring to mind a few of the announcements. Following this morning's Mass, there will be a special meeting in the parish hall where we will elect a representative of our parish to attend the upcoming special synod that will be held in Scranton, Pennsylvania on October the 25th. I ask that you all, if you can, please attend. Uh, some of the announcements for this week. Um, on Tuesday at 10.30, a rehearsal of our choir. I do bring to mind on Wednesday, uh, after Holy Mass, we're scheduled to have our newly restored stained glass window reinstalled. And there will be a special blessing uh, that will take place following Holy Mass for the window. 
I know that it has been a long process, but we're at a point where we're almost finished. And I look forward, as I'm sure all of you do, to have this beautiful stained glass window uh, reinstalled. You know, one of the things that I don't know how many of you know, but the stained glass window that we are having reinstalled is the only true stained glass window that we have in our church. You have to think in 1929, 1930, during the first year of the Depression, poor Polish immigrants came and they built this church within nine months of the first mass they celebrated. They didn't have the money for purchasing individual stained glass windows but they had an artist, as you can see. All these other windows are painted. What a beautiful, what a beautiful gift to have a talent like that to prepare these windows for our church. I do bring to mind, also, on a Saturday there will be the making of pierogi, session, I call it session three, I wish to thank all who have participated in the past couple of weeks. We have one more week for pierogi and then we're going to get going on the gawonki. And there are other things like apple pies and French meat pies and desserts. Um, one of the things that we ask is that anything that you are going to donate, do not put an individual price down on it. Um, we want to uh, see what we have and we will, uh, people that are on the, um, on the committee for our fall bazaar will actually be pricing all of the things that are donated. Um, I bring to mind, uh, next Sunday, there is a harvest dinner at St. Valentine's Church in Northampton, uh, talking with Chris uh, Newman, the parish chairperson. Um, the deadline, for ticket sales will be tomorrow. So if you can, please support our sister parish. I also do bring to mind that next Sunday is the solemnity of the Christian family, one of the five solemnities that our first bishop, Francis Hodder, actually instituted at one of the first synods. And then I also wanted to bring to mind that a week from tomorrow, I am scheduled to fly out to um, Pittsburgh and attend a three-day conference of the National Mission and Evangelism Commission that will be held in Washington, PA. I am scheduled to return late Thursday evening. Uh, as I put in the bulletin, I've informed Father Senior Soltishak of this and that he has offered to handle any kind of unforeseen emergencies during my absence. Um, and again, I bring to mind that our Fall Bazaar on October the 26th, uh, the schedule uh, is listed in the, in the bulletin. Uh, next, uh, next Sunday following Holy Mass, I would like very much to give a, a presentation on the work that we are doing of, from the National Mission and Evangelism Commission, of which I am a member. And so, if you can, please, I would like very much for you to attend. On Sunday, October 20th, um, I have talked with Dr. Shirley Medlitsky, and she confirmed with me that she will be giving a presentation on the Strategic Planning Committee of the Eastern Diocese. So again, I ask that you kind of keep that date in mind are there any other announcements that I failed to mention? Hey. The Adoration Society is once again selling the calendars that we have in the past. And uh, they arrived yesterday. And so I have them and will be selling them this morning and in subsequent Sundays. $7 each. Thank you, Penny. Are there any others? Teresa. Today is our 40th wedding anniversary. Uh, <laughs> yeah.
Well, I want to say something. When Bill told me about the 40th anniversary, and I was going to slide that in at the very end. Oh, uh, really? Um, when Bill said that he was celebrating with you your 40th anniversary, he had a smile on his face. So, so that's well, a good thing. 40 years, but it seems like an eternity. Yeah. <laughs> But he sounded, he made it sound like it was a blessing and not a sentence. So we, we congratulate you on your 40th and uh, God's blessings be with the two of you and with your loved ones. Are there any other? Father, yes. I have an intention. Um, we pray for Janet Goodman, who is my daughter Jenny's mother-in-law. She suffered a stroke on Thursday morning and endured 22 hours of surgery. And as I spoke to Jen yesterday, she has not woken up yet. Oh, God. So, if we pray for her. Yes. This is why I call upon all of you to remain and to offer prayers as a congregation. You know, we are so blessed and we are called upon to not only love one another, but also to pray for one another. And so our prayers with Janet. And on Tuesday, every Tuesday, uh, unless there's a special solemnity, there's always a Mass for Health and Healing, and that on Tuesday will offer intentions for Janet. Thank you, God bless you, and have a good week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty and Eternal Father, you know our hearts. You know each of us. You know that you taught us to love one another and to pray for one another. And so we pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying. We pray for the homeless and for the hungry. We pray for all abused and neglected children in our world. For all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for those who serve in our military, armed forces, and a special prayer today for Janet. May we join in saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the intention of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.